like I'm about to do a fun project. Today I'm going to make a two-part silicone mold of this. This is a valve wheel that I found laying in the dirt in front of the door to my shop. I don't know where it came from or to whom it belongs, but it looks cool and I could definitely use it to plus a set that I build. Unfortunately, this cast iron piece weighs a bit over 6.5 pounds. If the set that I was building had pipes running overhead and the valve wheel came loose, it could quite possibly severely injure someone if it hit them on the head. Now for a quick cleanup. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to use this thick piece of styrofoam as the base to build the box to make this mold. Next, I cut one disc-shaped and one donut-shaped piece of styrofoam. Both pieces are just temporary placeholders for what will eventually become the second half of the silicone mold. I'm going to use part of this block of styrofoam to make a spacer that will temporarily fill in the concave part of the valve wheel. Now that the styrofoam is all tacked in place with hot glue, I'm going to use some water-based clay to fill in all the voids between the styrofoam and the valve wheel. I will also be making registration marks in the clay so that the two halves of the mold will line up properly when casting additional valve wheels. Now that the wall for the mold box is glued into place, I press the clay down into the outside edge to make a complete seal between the cardboard and the clay. Next I use my sculpting tool to carve a registration groove into the clay all the way around the valve wheel. I used a permanent marker to press registration dimples into the center of the clay. I made sure that the dimples were pressed vertically to prevent the two halves of the mold from locking together during a casting. I'm going to have to mix up several batches of silicone for this project. Since it is difficult for me to calculate what the volume of the mold box is, I'm just going to have to do my best guess and hopefully I won't mix up too much silicone. This means that I'll have to do a few pours until the mold box is full. I start by pouring a thin layer of silicone over the valve wheel and giving it sufficient time to stretch out. When the silicone stretches out really thin, it pops many of the bubbles and makes the silicone closest to the mold subject as bubble free as possible. Once the bubbles have popped, I pour in the rest of the silicone, trying not to disturb the thin layer that I just poured. Thank you. 
Ooh, just look at all that swirling goodness. What have I done? Eh, whatever. In between this pour and the last pour, one of the little dowels that I had glued to the valve wheel as a pour spout popped off again and it got me thinking. When I make castings with this mold and I'm pouring expansion foam into the mold, I'm going to need a bigger pour spout to get the liquid foam into the mold as quickly as possible. For this pour, I'm going to add blended up bits of scrap silicone to the mix. Since I'm just filling an empty space, it won't matter if the extra chunks are there or not, as well as I won't be letting any of my expensive silicone go to waste. Now for the last pour of this side of the mold. Time to open it up, clean it out, and pour the other half of the mold. Fortunately, the clay dried, which makes cleanup easier and not quite as messy. I need to carefully clean off all of the clay from the valve wheel because any clay that is left stuck to the mold subject will forever be a part of any future castings that I pull from this mold. Before I pour any silicone, I need to make sure to coat everything with mold release. The reason is that silicone bonds to silicone. If I didn't use mold release, I would just end up with a valve wheel encased in an expensive block of silicone. I repeat the same process for popping bubbles as I did for the first half. It would appear that I should have focused a bit more release agent on the cardboard. The silicone didn't bond to the cardboard so much as it is gripping the texture of the cardboard. Looks like it came out perfectly. After a quick bath, I'll build a box that will clamp the two halves together.
I cut two pieces of plywood out at the same time. That way they'll end up being pretty close to the same shape. Next I'll cut some sections of 2x2 two two that will be the vertical supports. I made them about a quarter of an inch shorter than the silicone mold so that the two pieces of plywood can effectively hold the mold together. Lastly, I need to drill holes into the lid for the pour spout and vent. For my first casting, I made an attempt at spray painting the mold before pouring the expansion foam. Even before I poured this into the mold, I had a feeling that it might be way too much expansion foam. I waited until the last second to press this plug into the opening of the pour spout in an attempt to create back pressure into the mold. The back pressure forces the expansion foam into all the corners of the mold. It turns out that my hunch was right and I mixed way too much expansion foam. And here they are. I did a few experiments to see what I was capable of making with this mold. First, here is the silver one with a finished paint job. It turned out okay. However, because I mixed too much foam, the two halves of the mold separated and the edges aren't perfect. I also noticed that the outer edge of the silver one got deformed and isn't perfectly round. Next time I make a mold like this, I'll make the edge of the mold thicker, which might mitigate deformations and castings from those other molds. The silver one didn't come out great, but I would definitely use it on a set where it would be up and away from guests where they couldn't get a close look at it. Next I made another rigid foam casting where I mixed less foam and it came out less deformed. However, a section didn't get any foam so it didn't come out perfect either. Just like the first one, I would easily use this on a set where it would be away from guests being able to get a close look at it and notice that it had any issues. Next, I made this one where I used soft foam. For some reason it came out the worst of the bunch. As well as the paint is still sticky, which is similar to when I made the soft foam bowling pin. Lastly, I made this solid resin one. I would use a resin casting in a situation where the guests would be interacting with it directly or if they would have direct access to it. The expansion foam valve wheels are just too brittle or generally just not strong enough to endure the abuse from the general public. 
Because I didn't put any vent holes in the wheel itself, the resin wasn't able to fill the mold properly, and a huge air bubble was trapped in the mold. There's really only two ways that I can correct this. One is to cut holes into the mold, the other is to use a pressure chamber. I'm not keen on cutting holes in the finished molds, and my pressure chamber is much too small for this mold. Further experimentation with this mold will be needed to get complete castings and resin out of it. The original wheel weighed quite a bit. I wonder how much the new ones weigh. Hmm. Only a couple ounces. Pretty good. I would feel much more comfortable having one of these suspended over a guest's head on a set instead of the original. I definitely still have a bit of experimenting and adjusting to do with this mold to get it right. I'll probably do an update video in the future of a group of projects that I kept tinkering with after their respective videos were completed, just to show that I eventually got things right. Thanks for watching!